Hey everybody, uh, welcome to this week's Crypto Mastery class. I'm Brett, your host, and uh, we'll go ahead and get started here. And this class is, uh, we're going to be covering our indicators here, the Crypto Mastery indicators in some live market conditions, lots going on in the markets. So we'll be looking at that and uh, also uh, covering some news. But uh, before we dive into all that here, let's see, and I want to welcome all of our live members that are part of the M3 Crypto and Crypto Mastery group. And um, you can learn more about those at moonstream.io. By the way, the uh, Crypto Summit is over. And so um, those of you that are in our M3 group uh, have access to those. If you haven't gotten your logins, let me know. Uh, they uh, did go out. And of course, we comp those for you guys. But um, anyone else watching the recordings or if you're on YouTube, you can check out the Future of Crypto Summit recordings at futureofcryptosummit.com. And there's a button there to access uh, all 27 interviews. And uh, those are excellent. Really, yeah, that was a lot of fun. And so those of you that joined, thank you. Let's see. Yeah, I keep forgetting CNBC is such a pain in the neck about uh, their ad blocker. So I'm going to have to turn this off just to read their silly headlines and see their ads. Uh, anyway, let's dive into some news. And I've got some questions here I see coming in, so I'll answer those. So let's see. CNBC reports Bernstein says, not sure who Bernstein is, buy these cheap crypto stocks to play the expected Bitcoin ETF and having. Um, yeah, just in general, all of these headlines, unless you recognize the name, uh, take it with a grain of salt. I, a lot of these people, they come and go or they have a publicist that gets their article into CNBC or something else. And look at that. They won't even let us see the article without signing up for that. So CNBC is, um, uh, you're dead to me. I'm sorry to say that. <laughs> Too much free, uh, good uh, stuff on the internet. But here's another one, the ad-free service. Um, you know what? Uh, the, they don't like these ad blockers, but I, I just don't like all these ads flashing at us. I'll allow it this time. And uh, But if not, we'll just avoid those sites that have the ads because it gets a bit annoying. All right, so Bitcoin it could hit 150K. Now, I've shown you how, why I think it's probable we'll hit 150K. Um, I think it's very likely we hit 100K, 150K is the Fibonacci projection. So I think that's uh, that's probable. 210,000 is also possible. And so uh, there's one of those pesky ads. So anyway, let's see what this person says. Don't know who that is, but um, a, um, you know, these articles are designed to get clicks on their ads. And so we kind of skim them to get an overall feel. And uh, so not a whole lot there. You know, there's other, the better sites that we usually land on are like Cointelegraph, despite their gaff of um, falsely uh, or pre, um, kind of pre-announcing the BlackRock ETF. Turns out, you know, they weren't wrong. They were just early. And uh, I have various theories about that and why they would do that to pump price up, especially because I think that service is uh, uh, treading water. I have inside information there laying off all their U.S. staff, or they did last year. So anyway, while those load up on the other screen, let's dive into some of the news here on uh, Crypto Panic. Let's see, uh, Chainlink has resistance ahead. Chainlink's been looking great. So let's look at this. That's been on our radar. For sure, we want to check out uh, Chainlink. Let's see, Ethereum roll-up. Not a whole lot going on right now in the news today. Let's see, staking surges by 54 percent to 8 billion on cardano cardano is a slow moving battleship but you know once it gets going in the right direction it uh, it could be one to hold on to i've just never really had a lot of success or uh, fun investing in cardano let's see gemini limit crypto transfers in the uk uh, so there's not a whole lot here analyst warns of crypto market turbulence could we see a 20 percent drop you know i am seeing that we're due for a pullback in our indicators and it's not a good thing or a bad thing. It's just a thing. Actually, it's likely a good thing so we can reset for the next push higher. And so uh, we'll dive into these as well. And then uh, let's check out the daily hodl. These are good sources that aren't buried in ads. So I recommend these. And uh, Cointelegraph generally has a good good amount of uh, information. I say generally because of the um, that false report that they had that BlackRock had been approved. But uh, they were... They were probably just early. Mark Yusko was saying, I don't think they were wrong. I think they were just early. And maybe um, maybe they had some inside info or they slipped it out to, to be early. doesn't matter. It doesn't seem like it's coming. So uh, let's see. Daily HODL uh, says hard and fast Bitcoin price explosion and new highs. Uh, mid uh, about to catch everyone off guard says top trader. It's always the people that are unknown label themselves as you know, top trader or pseudonymous trader so-and-so. Uh, at any rate, uh, let's see what they have to say there. 
and we'll get our little highlight already here. Uh, so uh, Hong Kong considering crypto ETFs as part of an effort to become leading digital asset hub. You know, Hong Kong, um, yeah, I guess things have stabled out, stabilized there a bit. But um wonder if, yeah, if they had an ETF, I mean, it wouldn't get a lot of the the US action since we have ours our own our own on the way. But um certainly could see uh, some of the Asian volume going there because uh, that's where they are. And a lot of gambling. Some of the biggest gambling is in Singapore, the Marina Sands Casino. Well, that one casino does more volume than all of Las Vegas. It's amazing. Um, we sp spoke there a couple of years ago. So a Hong Kong considering crypto ETFs as part of an effort to become leading a digital asset hub, weighing the possibility of spot currency. So I'm just going to skim this, you guys. And uh, let's see, uh, possibility, it seems kind of watered down, not really all that interesting. So really what I want to do is skim through the news this week and get to the good stuff and get to the charts because show me the charts and I'll tell you the news, as we've been saying. Solana is set to take market share away from Cardano. According to Bloomberg, Bloomberg crypto analyst, uh, maybe 700,000 Bitcoin addresses created in a single day. That's interesting. Huh. Okay. New addresses created in a single day. That's that's positive. That's good. Veteran crypto investor bullish on Cosmos ecosystem ahead of potential $200 million tidal wave. Uh, venture capitalist Arthur Chung and pretty bullish. <laughs> He's pretty bullish, folks. Uh, alert the media. He's pretty bullish. Okay. Trader who caught 2023 crypto rally says Bitcoin looks like a giga bullish uh, updates outlook on Ethereum. Um, how do I get in here? I've been saying that since December of 2022. Uh, anyway, <laughs> Trader predicts more rallies for Chainlink. And uh, all right. So we'll go all of these. Cynthia Loomis, what's she up to now? Um, she's, uh, you know, has been trying to pass regulation against Tether and Binance, but uh, specifically as it's, you know, I think she's getting a bad rap, but specifically as it's aimed, you know, for the money laundering and the bad actors. And um, I don't think she's going after that to take crypto down, although some have suggested that her constituents and major donors are uh, pushing her to do that. But, um, you know, that's the game of politics. Abnormal move coming for Bitcoin is one indicator forms a setup. All right, I think that's where I'll draw the line. And uh, yeah, well, this guy's saying they're going to print the money. We certainly, I think, are close to uh, quantitative easing. China's doing it. And um, another country, I forget, is already starting to get the money uh, printing printers going. So the minor money printers are going burr again. Uh, institutions piling to Bitcoin. Ethereum is Solano at 262 million capital outflows. So, all right, let's start there. We've got a bunch of news actually to go through. And so we have the hard and fast Bitcoin price explosion and new highs about to catch everyone off guard, says uh, unknown top trader. And uh, pseudonymous, see, I was joking about that. Pseudonymous analyst blunts. Um, yeah. All right. So let's see. Uh, Bitcoin maybe in the early stages of a strong impulse. Could take Bitcoin near 60K. Um, I'm curious. So, OK, here we go. Here we give the fancy schmancy Elliott Wave theorists. And I, I know I said that wrong for on purpose. Um, that's fine. Have your your waves. So, look, these things can play out, but I I just don't use them and don't need to. Our signals give us the answers in a uh, a more near term and immediate to term. What's happening now? But let's see what he has to say. Uh, attempts to forecast price movements based on crowd psychology, you, you know, and all this Elliott wave stuff. It's just it doesn't apply as well to crypto. Crypto is much too volatile and um and unpredictable. In 2021, there was a guy that I was following. And uh, he was really good on TA and trading view. And he had a number of really good picks and he was called, he went by uh, Bronson, the shark. And, you know, he got a little bit uh, of his ego in the way and he started calling himself the king. And he had this huge prediction. Bitcoin was going higher and his Elliott waves and all this stuff. And he was so sure, but I was like, uh, well, um, Hey, what about this head and shoulders uh, here? This giant head and shoulders. And I put that on on Trading View, and um, and I was I was right. Later, he said, "Yeah, it was a good call." But you, you know, I think the important thing is always be aware of your own confirmation bias and stay humble, because it's when you go out and you think you can't lose, uh, the market um, will hand your you know what to you. 
So anyway, um, <clears throat> Trader says he believes the Bitcoin likely in a third phase of five-way pattern to the upside. Upside. Um, I mean, that's that's fair. I think it's general enough that it's fair, uh, but it doesn't really say when. Let's see, macro wave three. So here's a little Elliott wave stuff here, and it's confusing. But but you know, look, it's all what I see is an upward trend channel. And we're at the upper stage of the trend channel. I think we pull back and we ride this trend channel up, maybe break out vertical. He's predicting a vertical rise here. Uh, well, it's true we've broken the upper range of the trend channel, so we will look at that. I do have that chart where we've overlaid the bars pattern from back here, and it could take us up in this range is pretty fast. So always good to kind of weigh that uh, thing in, but it has been kind of stuck in a range. Somebody was joking, I think it was Elio was joking about this today, that or last night, that Bitcoin's uh, become a $34,000 stable coin because it's been going sideways for so long. But all right, let's keep going here. Uh, more than 700,000 new Bitcoin addresses. That's new people or entities opening new Bitcoin addresses in a single day. That's amazing. As Bitcoin flirts with 35,000. So uh, let's see, I wonder if they have any data on that. Were these all retail? I mean, um, could these be sort of AIs? That's a lot of, that's a lot in one day it, it, without any, I could, I could see that with BlackRock and when BlackRock's ETF gets approved, but just on a random Monday, um, I'm assuming it was Monday on Sunday, I just, I don't know. Something's a little fishy about that. But at any rate, new addresses, 700,000, uh, certainly in the right direction. And let's see, uh, it's current price above the, I don't know, I need to be, I should be using my little highlighter thing here. The uh, analyst says uh, above the um, cost basis of long-term BTC holders, generally a bullish a uh, bullish sign that more people are in profit than in losses. And uh, it's an on-chain metric that uh, tracks the average the average acquisition price of all coins held over six months. And this on-chain signal has historically preceded big Bitcoin bull rallies. So that's interesting and worth noting. And um, so that adds to our narrative. We are looking at uh, it, what does everything add up to be? There's no one person who has the answer. So, uh, and he says, Bitcoin recently crossed over the six month to three year hodler cost basis of 34,150. You know, I was watching and diving into a lot of this on chain metrics for a while, and I just found it to be a lot of noise. And, um, you know, I let these other guys, if something big happens on the on chain metrics, somebody is usually touting it. And, um, but I, I trust what I see with our indicators. And since uh, we typically are swing traders that, and active traders, that's what we uh, want to watch for. But uh, at any rate, uh, we'll keep an eye on that. And there are some, I may dive back into that. I just found that to be unnecessary. Although I know a lot of these guys look at it. Uh, although, um, I mean, but you guys know that story. I was in the Bitcoin whale meeting. They did an hour long thing on uh, back in 2022 while we were heading down. And Dylan LeClaire, the editor of Bitcoin Magazine, just said, hey, this is why we won't go below 30,000. And they had all these fancy Bitcoin uh, or uh, on-chain metrics. And I just said, hey, I think you're wrong. And um, and uh, they nearly threw me out of the room. But I, I, I <laughs> anyway, uh, I was right. So <clears throat> let's see. Yeah, so the on-chain metrics don't go down the rabbit hole unnecessarily. So, and let's see, the last three times BTC surpassed the six-month, three-year hodler cost basis, it underwent, well, is that right? 4,000, call it 5,000, 100% and 780% bull runs, respectively. So, okay, so now, I mean, this is one to pay attention to. The single cycle are hodlers, because there's a million of them, but... um. You know, this is interesting. Supply cost basis. Does it show where it happened before? Yeah, right here. So when it happened here, when the black line went above the purple line, the the, the price went above the single cycle hodlers. That means that uh, there's, you know, relatively new owners and it, they were in, then became in profit. That's kind of what that means. And then it took off. So cool metric here. I think, you know, uh, I'll screenshot that and share it with the M3 class as well uh, i actually need to turn that back on and um any but any questions on that on this chart here maybe i can uh, open this up here and uh let me just grab a screenshot of that because i think that's uh, kind of cool hold on to this one and uh okay that's uh, in the way anyway hopefully you can see that you guys i can always drop the image in the chat so uh let's move on we got a lot to cover and i want to get to the charts but um He's saying a lot of capital is flowing into crypto, crypto now. That's one of our other headlines, signaling strong investor confidence. And uh, that uh, certainly would be true. 
But let's get on to these other articles where they're suggesting 200 billion tidal wave. Considering that the total market cap uh, is at 1.3 trillion or thereabouts, you know, to go up 200 billion is not a huge amount in the scheme of things. That would be, you know, 10%, 15% from current levels. So, um, you know, certainly I think that's doable. We'll look at the chart and um, I know we have a question on that. Uh, Mike asks uh, about uh, total market cap resistance at 1.3 trillion. And are we thinking we get a pullback at that point? And right now, shouldn't we be going long in alts? Um, okay, good question. Um, I wouldn't say be going long on anything unless the charts dictate, but I do think we're due for a pullback in Bitcoin and possibly on the total market cap, just because it's run up so far and we need a refresh to push higher. And uh, that's my read on this. And so um, let's uh, unpack this a little bit more. Venture capitalist Arthur Chung says pretty bullish on Cosmos. We can look at Cosmos. Um, that's a great coin. Loved trading that in 2021. And uh, the DeFi capital founder and CEO says uh, on the social media platform X, he's talking about DYDX, which we've been watching. Um, migration will increase the Cosmos system. So uh, I guess we missed that. So is DYDX moving over to Cosmos? Because that would be big and good for both of them. We like DYDX, and when, uh, I know they have uh, version 4 coming out and a big airdrop. So especially if you're non-US, you want to get on that DYDX version 4. Uh, does not applicable for US uh, customers, unfortunately, but I believe you still can get some of the airdrop if you're one of the customers. Um, somebody check me on that. Uh, or if it's version 4 only, you might need to be out of the country or, or VPN. So anyway, but uh, this is good for owning the token DYDX. DYDX is a decentralized uh, DEX and basically is going to allow deriv derivatives trading and and uh, sort of active trading with uh, bid asks and the higher pro level um, uh, charting. What am I trying to say here? The interface is like the buy bits and the bit gets and the you know that kind of a style on a DEX, which is going to be great. Uh, uh, Cosmos Atom has been a great trading coin. It runs to its, it beats to its own drum, as they say. And that's why our indicators shine with Atom specifically, especially on that TSI and the weekly. So we'll make sure to look at that. All right. Uh, TBL refers to total value locked and the amount of capital deposit within protocol smart contracts often use the gaze the health of a crypto ecosystem. Yeah, so, you know, this will help um, Cosmos TVLs by um, the deal with uh, DUIDX. So we should probably look that up here because that would be uh, interesting uh, to read into. So I'm going to say DUIDX Cosmos deal. And I'll put the chat away here for a second. Uh, let's see, DUIDX Cosmos mainnet launch migration from Ethereum. And um, let's see, that's a week ago. There's an older headline that are they distancing from each other but uh that's an older one so let's see this is just a video though the headline is cosmos mainnet launch migration from ethereum l2 to cosmos and maker dow okay so that's something different well that's good to know i, I wasn't aware so i'll uh, keep an eye on that institutions piling to bitcoin ethereum and solana with 262 billion in capital inflows, coin shares reports that's uh, between Bitcoin, ETH, and Solana, which have had a nice run recently. So that's not a surprise. And heavy inflows from institutional investors last week. So what that tells us is in the Wyckoff accumulation patterns that you know the institutions are, are you know getting in and piling on. They're in the markup phase because we've been going sideways long enough. Likely that's where they were accumulating a lot of this. But uh, it's interesting that they were able to track this in the digital asset fund flows report. So I'd like, I'm gonna it'd be fun to know where that is and how to get uh, get notified for that. And uh, digital asset fund weekly report. Looky there, they have a weekly report on that. I'm gonna sign up for that, you guys. Uh, you could probably Google that and find out how to do that too. Let's see, did that load up here? Digital asset fund. Well, that's pretty good. Good to know, and. You know, it's, it makes your eyeballs hurt if you look at all three of those together. Um, but um, yeah, I'll keep an eye on that. Bookmark that. It's interesting. So what do we have here? We spotted up nearly 11 billion positive inflows, the highest in 2023. So this chart here has got a lot of lines on it and squiggly things that um, uh, don't worry about it. It's just uh, positive inflows is a good thing. So let's keep going here. Daily HODL. We, we were already on this one, it looks like. And um, 
Okay, we covered that. Trader who caught 2023 crypto rally says uh, Bitcoin looks giga bullish. Uh, okay. And let's see if he says why. Uh, let's see some another pseudonymous analyst. And Bitcoin trading wine range 32 Bitcoin now 32 indicates. You know, I've been saying this for months, you guys. When we get above 32K, we're going higher. So, um, you know, I'm not... You know what I'm saying? These uh, these are not terribly newsworthy uh, announcements that we're seeing here. So uh, let's see. Here's my little layer. I got to turn that thing on every time. It looks like um, that 32k level. That line, that green line. He drew it correctly. Yes, nicely done. Um, but obviously, it was support, support broke as resistance, resistance, resistance. So when we got above 32k, now we're in good shape, and now we're in this uptrending channel, and we're at the upper border of the channel here. I think we have some. You know, we're going to have trouble below 39k. Calm down a bit. Retest this 32k level. That would be a good thing, and then push up higher. And when we break 40k, it's to the off to the races. Okay, and I've been saying that we go to 50k. 48k to 50k is where the golden pocket is on the fib retracement from the market cycle high down to the low around 16.5. So we'll look at that uh, also. And so let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, I wonder how he gets nominated as a top trader. I never heard of this guy. Bitcoin trading at 34k. Looking for the smart contract. Ethereum ETH analyst says ETH will likely continue to underperform Bitcoin. Well, that's nothing new. I mean, Bitcoin dominance leads every market rally until it sort of runs out of steam. And then the money profits get taken and into ETH and then ETH runs and then people sell and go into alts and then the alts run and then it, so on and so forth. And then down to the shit coins. And, uh, and that's how it how all goes down. Uh, anyway, so that's why the BTC, ETH BTC ratio is heading lower. It's Bitcoin's time to shine and lead the market. It's the safest assets. It's where the institutional money is going to go. Um, this is really non-news and um, uh, not really worth diving into any further. Okay, well, anyway, it was worth skimming. Abnormal move coming for Bitcoin. All these uh, clickbait headlines. Let's see, uh, crypto analyst so-and-so says that uh, Bill Faze. Let's see if we can dive into the meat of this uh, on short notice. And um, more importantly, let's see, how do I, okay, Alt-H, apparently, you guys. If I hit Alt-H, it's supposed to turn on that little um, toggle thing, but it does not work. It does not work. All right. A, uh, using 1030 day window. The He's saying March 2024 will be the beginning of the next Bitcoin bull rally. I think he's late. No, I think it's January. We really start to push out and break out. Okay, so besides the halving is in April, so March would be, you know, March certainly probably could go vertical, but uh, I think that I think because people know that expect that's happening and that's the consensus, everyone's going to jump in front of it. Uh, he says, I don't think this is the absolute run to new all time highs. I mean, that could be in 2025. But I don't know. I've I've semi. There's still a, a chance we get to 50k. Um, not all time highs, but 50k by the end of the year sets us up for all time highs by April. Let's see. But we don't know. Let's see what happens. And uh, let's see. He's you know, abnormal impulse. Okay. I wonder if he says why. And he doesn't say why. So. Okay, more non-news. Hey, how about some? How about some content and uh, some value here, you guys? Anyway, um, visual outflows asphalt, uh, of assets. All right, let's keep going here. We've got a couple more. Well, that's a neat looking uh, opt-in form there. Where's the X? And huh, nicely done. We can't even get past it. There we go. Analyst warns of crypto market turbulence. Could Bitcoin see a 20% drop? Uh, let's see. I don't think uh, 20% is in the cards, but you never know. Where are we? Benzinga, more of these ad-driven sites. Uh, they don't really say why. Uh, let's see. Where's the actual article? We're talking about open interest in Bitcoin crypto hits $13 billion. Um, You know, So it's true when options and derivatives get high and the bets are big, and there's usually a big move coming. And that's because uh, somebody wants to be on the other side and the winning side of that. So the bets really start lining up. And when there's that much money on the table, everyone comes to uh, the game, kind of like the lottery. When the lottery gets over a billion, everyone goes out to win the lottery and play the lottery. 
and it's kind of similar on the institutional side and they come in and place big bets or if there's uh it's, it's more than i want to get into but if there's a price that's being protected or there's a massive amount of puts or calls at a certain level uh, there's value in going in in the the spot market and driving price against that to liquidate those uh, derivatives so um but let's leave that alone for now maybe we'll cover it a little bit more in tomorrow's m3 active trader class and so i think we've just about covered it here what else did we have Chainlink has massive resistance ahead will the rally end soon you know they ask these questions and headlines and then they don't really get into it maybe they're going to get into it chain link is above this high levels investors let's see uh let me hit the uh, little highlighter here so we can get a handle on this so i don't know what this is all about these these are the price ranges that um <clears throat> just makes it more difficult to read let's see size and dollar represents the number of investors or addresses who purchase their coins alongside um I, I i don't know so what um <clears throat> xrp moving finally it sounds like after they won their court case chain link above these levels naturally be in a state of profit so i guess they're suggesting people would take profits or a lot of them are still sitting at a loss and i'm really not saying much here on the other hand Let's see. Just so this is more non-news. All right, let's skip it. Uh, let's see if anything new came in. Cardano staking surges by 54 percent, eight billion staked in ADA. You know, I mean, uh, the ADA army, if it were, as it were, is uh, you know, they're they it's it's a cult basically. They've drank the Kool Aid. Uh, it's the Charles Hoskins cult, and they believe that he will lead them to the promised land. Um, it has not been seen to. They don't execute on time. They move very slowly. And uh, there's no, um, I don't know. I just, something to un very unexciting about Cardano, but uh, it's uh, the third largest cryptocurrency by staking market cap. So that's interesting. You know, look, if, if you are more conservative type and nothing wrong with that, probably good to have some in Cardano, staked in Cardano and just hold it. You know, they, they may be the tortoise that wins the race, whereas uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum are more of the uh, hare or the rabbit as it were. So, all right, how are we doing on time? We're half an hour in. Let's dive into some charts and get rid of all this news here. And uh, where should we start? Uh, we can start out at our top movers here just to skim, see if anything is looking good on the daily. I don't see anything. So why don't we save that for last? I usually, I think I want to start. Singularity Dow is, is moving. I noticed that, SDAO. So we'll, it's, I'll have that chart up anyway. By the way, if you're watching the YouTube channels, please like and subscribe, maybe share this with somebody uh, because um, we've been um, sharing some really good ideas and we've been right uh, in this class and predicting a lot of these moves. And it all comes down to the indicators, our crypto mastery indicators that have been so uh, useful here. We're coming into an overbought TSI level. This is on a weekly basis. So with Solana, I think we could still push up another 30%. We have this new trend channel going. And what do we want to look at, you guys? This zone of opportunity. What do we see right there? The 21-week EMA coming up, about to cross the 50-week EMA. These are some very strong signals. After Solana went sideways, 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 and tried several times to break above this all important $26 level, call it 27, which was re support way back in 2021. This is around when I called it and uh, recommended Solana, by the way, here in August of 2021, as you remember, uh, August 1st, we recommended Solana at 35, shot up 657%. But look at this, you guys, on a weekly basis, we're, we're right back where we were in 2021. So, what I would suggest is this is a, a great opportunity, especially on any pullback to the 50-week EMA to dollar cost average end. This is a very strong sign when these weekly averages go up. We're in a new upward trend channel. And let's take a look at our early reversal indicator to see uh, what uh, we can gather here as, uh, as well. So look at that nice order blocks printing in this range. Um, guys, we don't do trade recommendations in this class. Uh, we do in our m3 active trader and our retire rich classes uh but this is something where we should talk about here tomorrow now these order blocks are there we had the eri back here we had the tsi green signal green we're all green on our indicators 
So the only thing I'd be looking for is some kind of a pullback for an ideal, an ideal entry into Solana. If you're holding some now, then that would be a good place to dollar cost average. If it shoots up tier to the $60 range, good place to take profits. But we'd want to wait for a bearish early reversal indicator, those arrows there. And if this is the first time you're seeing all this, uh, I can give you a quick overview there that's these indicators here with these arrows which have called every market top and bottom almost exactly since 2021 uh so uh let's see where were we with solana the other thing if i put on our average true range that has flipped to bullish as well so solana looking good with this on a weekly time frame if we uh, zoom into the daily time frame looks like it's got some more juice but it's a little bit overbought and, uh, you know, uh, but I do think this is looking very strongly uh, strong on the larger time frame. So uh, with that in mind, maybe let's do this. Let's look at uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum and jump over to our crypto mastery list. See what Bitcoin is up to. Maybe we can look at total market cap here. But look at that all green on the radar, you guys. All green on the radar. That's very bullish. And I've got uh, our, our Wayne Gretzky here, the great one, saying, where is the puck going to go? And we need, where is it going to go, Wayne? We need you to tell us, is it going to break 37,000 or will it skate back down, down to these lower levels and retest these levels and then shoot higher? Again, 32K, very important. Could come back down to the 21 and 50 day EMAs in here and then push higher. So right now, we don't know. Uh, Wayne Gretzky is skating around the, the goal. He hasn't shown us where it's looking like, but all green on the radar. I'm, I'm inching him higher. It's leading me to think that's where it's going. Uh, isn't it cool how this played out perfectly here with that target? Uh, this uh, this wedge pattern here we drew and laid over that. Price came right down, broke out of the wedge exactly to the target and a little bit higher. So I'm going to delete that, take that off the chart. So um, let's jump out a little bit further. What else do we have? So we have all green on the radar, a little bit overbought on the TSI, but we know it can stay up here for weeks at a time. So I'm leaning bullish. I'm leaning bullish here on Bitcoin that we break higher and we go higher. We have a key and a bell on our trend indicator. So that's good. And so we're leaning bullish here. What I would say is the confirmation is if we get back above this 36,250 uh, level, and uh, that would be a good place to set an alert. So I'm going to do set this alert in here. And something's wrong with my uh, my mouse here. It, uh, huh, okay, something's gone haywire. There it is. So crossing up, what did we say about this level right in here? Okay, uh, add alert, crossing up here at 36,830. Uh, I don't know, it's close enough. I want to know when it touches that because that's a breakout sign, you guys. And keep in mind, Bitcoin does not have to break out. Often it does not. Uh, when it does finally break out into a bull run, it just keeps going and you, it's hard to catch it. It's like a freight train. Uh, with that in mind, maybe worth considering, is it time to start adding to Bitcoin? Even though everyone, everyone is expecting a pullback, you know, I still think this is a monthly time frame. I still think we could pull back in this range, but it doesn't mean we have to. It starts breaking 36,200 to 36,000. Let me pull that down a bit. I, I want to catch it a little earlier, say 36,400. It's a little bit closer to um, where we'd want to hear about it. And that's where that's where uh, Wayne Gretzky's he's skating toward the goal. That's where he's going. So well, let's see what happens. And uh, but this green radar, I like a lot our ERI Pro big order block on the monthly and the weekly basis for showing money flow. So uh, these are all bullish signs. It'd be more bullish for key if there was another order block in here. Um, all the other things to, uh, to be equal, though, I would expect some pullback here, you know, um, but uh, that that could still stay green in this area. So we'll just have to wait and see. Pull back a great area to buy and DCA in, and if it goes higher and breaks above 30. That 36 uh, K, then that would be a place to add. Ethereum also all green on the radio, guys. We haven't on the radar. We haven't seen all green radars on the longer time frames in some time. Daily, weekly, monthly, and the quarterly. Uh, I I'm feeling very bullish in this market, and some people are saying we roll over, go lower. Uh, our signals aren't saying that. Okay, so. Uh, let's take a look at uh, Rune here. Rune getting some really nice buy pressure and uh, order flow. So the zone of opportunity did play out. Uh, Rune pushing higher. We like this in a new upper trending channel. So that's good. 
And let's take a look at our average true range. So that had flipped bullish. Uh, where where is uh, actually has not flipped bullish yet on the weekly time frame. So we want to keep an eye on the ATR. I think we're already obviously in an upward trend channel. So kind of a moot point, but a uh, very good looking chart right here. And uh, with some other order blocks down below us. So uh, guys, runes want to keep an eye on and um, a bit overbought up in this range. And uh, apologies, keep getting a phone calls. So I'll mute that uh, right there. And uh, so that's where uh, I think this is, is going to head higher as well. We have our micro caps. We have Strax. Uh, nice little pullback. But what looks good here on Strax, we have a 21-day crossing a 50-day EMA and also this uh, ERI Pro with an order block and money flow signal in here. So um, uh, again, on many of these patterns, I'm looking for pullbacks. But look at this. These crossovers on a weekly time frame, this is very bullish and want to be watching out for that. Other things I like about this chart is a nice flat support area and zooming out. This thing's got a lot of upside. So yeah, when in doubt, zoom out. So let's turn that off and just see how far could it go. Just to get back up to old highs, good barometer of where it could go. And, uh, and just to compare it to the other coins, some of these have maybe 5x, 10x to their old highs. This is a 35x. Back to old highs. Actually, I'll adjust this a bit on the lower end for current prices. But if we get a pullback, so currently 26x, call it 25x, back to old highs. Strax is one to have on the radar. If we do pull back in this range, it's a 38x. Uh, and that just shows you that the power of buying low when you have that chance. But we'll draw these circles on these 21 and 50 day crossovers because uh, these are some of the, the best setups you're ever going to find. Back in here when those crossed, shot up, looks about 30%. I'm just guessing. Let's see if I was on or not. I'm sorry, 700%. Why? I was way off on that. So that was a big move there. And it's it's hard to tell with these logarithmic charts, right? So that's why I always use that tool to draw it out. But so Strax, definitely want to keep an eye on. And I'm going to actually add it to another watch list for those of you uh, in the... Uh, other services. Uh, my Wi-Fi is super running super slow, by the way. Uh, how's the audio? Is this audio coming through in real time? And if I need to slow down, let me know. I've got another question. Uh, Mike asks, what is Strax? Um, that's a GTS question, Mike. Uh, Google that. And we'll, you can find out more. We're bringing it up tomorrow in the M3 Active Trader class. Uh, but Strax uh, is a, I believe it's in gaming. Um, and... Um, but, you know, look, the, the chart says it all. So go look that up. We, we do that really in the M3 class. So um, the uh, this is more on the indicator side, but we can certainly talk about that. Remind me tomorrow. Uh, Loom, not so much here. It's pulled back down. This is Loom Network, not the video service. UNFI has been looking great here. Popped above resistance. This is one of our picks in our Retire Rich class. And by the way, if you'd like to know more about any of our services, you can go to moonstream.io and find out about those. We have some, uh, look at those fancy new logos. Myrene did a great job. Uh, blockchain bottom line, entry level $300 course on everything blockchain and crypto. The Moonstream method is our newsletter and our monthly picks. We have our monthly call tonight, by the way, as a reminder. Uh, with Mike, uh, who's uh, always excellent. The State of the Union, as it were, for monthly um, is, uh, is tonight. Crypto Mastery, that's this class here. We have the Moon three, Moonstream Active Trader Wednesday classes, which we dive into more of the active trading and uh, trade calls and what really to look into on the uh, charts. And then the Inner Circle, that's the program where we uh, had picked Uni Unify. And uh, that's had a nice push higher. By the way, guys, I just put together, if you're in Retire Rich, I have a new portfolio tracker with all of our picks. We're up 30% on average uh, since starting the service in June and with two picks over 100% and others that are ready to launch. So uh, if you'd like more information about that, if you're watching on the YouTubes or later, you can just, there's a report here, nothing, no links to buy, just an email. You can email this to find out more. Okay, so uh, let's get back to the uh, charts here. UNFI breaking above resistance. And so I like this uh, chart here. Let's look at the indicators. We have a key. So the key setting up a bell, which would be another buy opportunity. I would wait. This is a weekly chart. 
Uh, we want to see this hold above the $9.60, but uh, I do like this uh, project, Unify Protocol. Uh, INJ here is another one we've been watching, and this has uh, had a nice push higher here that um, over 100% when we called it. So it's about 119%. That was one of our M3 picks and also the Retire Rich. Uh, where do I think this can go? I think this could easily go up here to the 3.618 FIB on this. And that would put it at 155% gain where we bought it and uh, slightly higher than here. Uh, and so what else are the indicators telling us? You know, a little bit overbought on the weekly, but uh, it certainly looks good on the overall chart. And one of the things I like most about this on uh, INJ is not only this upward trending uh, channel that we're seeing and uh, right here, but um, the story uh, on this and the, let's see, I think this data doesn't go back as far as I wanted it to, but, but look at this also, we're kind of getting into price discovery zone for, um, for this, you know, it's coming up to old resistance. So we need to get above that $20 level and uh, then it's off to the races there. And so put an alert on that. Okay, so just going through the list here. Polygon Matic had a nice one push higher on a weekly time frame, still below its 50 week EMA. And, um, you know, pushing higher though, looking strong on the uh, the TSI. We've got some more room on the trend strength indicator, nice slope and velocity. So I'd say Matic goes higher. And we really want to see that if it breaks above, if we get 80 cents again. And above the ice, the thick ice there, as we call it, that 50-day, the 50-week exponential moving average, then uh, we could see some really nice movement here. It's got a break. Well, it's broken out of this. So I do like this chart pattern forming. So um, keep an eye on Polygon Matica. It's definitely one of the ones we want to keep an eye on for uh, going back into uh, the next bull run. So uh, Ripple, Ripple finally looking good here. You know, they won their case, kind of fell on deaf ears and nice uh, upward uh, trajectory here, higher lows, you know, a couple ways you could draw this, but this is, uh, this is good. This is good to see. I'm not a big XRP proponent, but I think they've got such global reach that this is going to go higher and breaking out of this uh, symmetrical wedge pattern here. So, you know, look, um, this, this looks ready to take off. What I look most about this is the uh, this pattern here of the EMAs kind of crossing over and riding this trend line. Love that. Love to see that. And then we have our signal line turning green. Let's see. What have I done here? The... Yeah, so we have TSI going higher. Where's our ERI? See if we have the four horsemen, the ERI, TSI signal and bell. So we kind of do, we have the ERI. Let's open this up a bit. The early reversal indicator signaled there. We had the TSI a couple days later signaled here when it broke above the 50-day moving average. We almost have a rocket there on the launch pad. The thing is the the, the wick is, is, isn't quite there, but it's it I, based on the push higher, you know, you really want to see a longer wick and a bigger real body. That's when they shoot up into the sky. But um, we did see the the um, right on the 21 week moving average. And then, of course, our signal line going green. So we have the ERI, the TSI signal, and we have a bell. So we have the four horsemen pattern forming. And this is bullish. So keep an eye on XRP. You know, maybe this is the push that gets us firmly uh, back up above $2 and off to the races. But this is a very nice looking chart, you guys. Uh, look at this strong trend line, higher lows, higher lows, moving averages back above. And um, yeah, so XRP army people, that would be one to consider looking into. How are we doing on time? Have about 10 minutes. Uh, I can kind of skim through these. We've got a number of these other ones that are looking good, like Filecoin. I'd like to see it back above the 50 week EMA. But uh, in our other services, we're watching it for other reasons, right? So XLM looking good. We have an ERI. The TSI going green at above 20, signal line still red. So I am, uh, sorry, XLM lumens, seller lumens, not quite there yet. Let's take a look at uh, Mutable X. Nice little buy block there on the ERI. So ERI Pro right in this box there. TSI signal green and a bell. Uh, Mutable X looking good here, guys. What I would say is I'm going to put an alert right above a dollar. It uh, tried to push up above. It couldn't hold a dollar. That round number is usually a profit-taking number. But uh, this is one I would say is 
one to watch. We don't make buy and sell recommendations in here, but we do in some of our other classes. So uh, we will be uh, talking about that maybe tomorrow, you guys. Okay, storage also looking good. The 21 day, 50 day coming higher. Let's turn on our ATR on some of these. And we haven't looked at the vol index uh, for a while. So let's pull up our volatility index. But uh, we're getting an ATR turning higher on this, uh, possibly a 6X here on storage. Just zooming out on this. Okay, when in doubt, zoom out. But uh, we have the average true range turning to bullish, coming back, retesting right in this zone from the current prices. 592% uh, potential or a 6X back to the old highs in 2021. Uh, storage does uh, cloud hosted uh, web storage like an AWS, like an INJ. Uh, this is uh, looking good to me and I'd want to keep an eye on this. I like that the ATR is green. All signals are green on this. And so, um, yeah, guys, uh, S-T-O-R-J. Um, we'll want to talk about that uh, here at tomorrow's class as well. Anything else you guys want to look at here? We've got a couple more. We've got compound. Compound's been sort of inching its way up. It's not quite there yet. ATR is still red. Uh, we did have an ERI uh, TSI signal in Bell. Okay, well, that means no matter what, we take a closer look. That's the four horsemen. Let me turn off uh, the ATR here, which sometimes does come in late. And let's uh, take, a, take a gander at this thing a little closer. So here's an advanced setup here on the ERI, you guys. It's in the uh, Trader Success Checklist, by the way. If you guys don't have that, go to CryptoMastery.org uh, slash CM Checklist. That's hyphenated. Uh, you can also find it on our Moonstream site down below where we have free resources at Moonstream.io. And you can go right here and get this, uh, the sign up for these classes, also our trader success checklist. So if you'd like to attend these classes live every week, uh, you can do that here and sign up for those. And you can also get the, uh, the checklist. So the checklist allows you to essentially, uh, let's see, I thought I had that open. We give it a score. Now I'm going to go back to this is kind of an advanced setup with the early reversal indicator. And while that's loading, I'll uh, I'll pull this back up here because what this looks like is if you have two things, if you have a higher low and a higher ERI, that's generally good. And especially if you also have it on the TSI. So we're kind of seeing this higher lows on the TSI. So when that coincides with this early reversal indicator, uh, our accidental discovery that was so powerful and calling the market tops in 2021 and the market bottoms and uh, all along the way on the weekly time frame works great. Monthly time frame works great as well. So um, the point of this is from here, from current prices, you know, you've got a 15x potential on uh, compound to get back to old highs. So Definitely one to keep an eye on. And I'm um, curious here, let's turn on our vol index and just see, because uh, typically I use this on the shorter time frames. Uh, on, you know, on the, when it does show up on the longer time frames, it's, it's, uh, it's really powerful. But, um, you know, it's really, it's such a slow moving oscillator. It works best in the shorter time frames. So um, just to, on that note here, let me jump to a one hour, four hour. And uh, we've got Bitcoin here. Let's not sure why these are not showing up. Okay, we've got a TSI four hour. These do work in all time frames, And so I believe, yeah, there's a vol index on the four hour. So what I was suggesting, oh, all right, cover your eyes for a minute. This is kind of painful. Let me open this up and all of these lines and things like this. But if we just look at the vol index on this four hour time frame. What we look for here, just as review for many of you and uh, training for others, when the volatility index gets down and the volatility is really low and it breaks up above into this black area, this proceeds very often big moves higher. And similarly, when volatility gets too high and breaks lower, it precedes dropping in price. So if we look at this point right here, we had a little bit of a fake out, but if we look at it here in... Um, that this was this was the, almost the exact beginning of the uh, bull run on the four hour chart. And it triggered, the vol index triggered before our early reversal indicator. That's why I love this on the shorter timeframes, you know, and uh, and then we had that order block 
money flow up here on the ERI Pro. And then we had the ERI TSI signal. Okay, but those came a little later. That first sign was right back in here. So that's why it should be using that vol index on the uh, shorter time frames. Uh, one hour, four hour, I recommend that. And any questions, you guys? So let's see. I don't see much else happening here on the four hour. Could turn on our uh, our ATR. Uh, the ATR also works great on this four hour because as you can see, uh, right around the ATR caught it right at that same time. So on a four hour chart, the average true range, the ERI Pro and the Vol Index. Those are sort of the three to watch. And uh, but doesn't it nice we have the green on the radar I don't think I've ever seen this. So we have green. Uh, okay, no, it's back. <laughs> you see, it's turning red. Uh, wait, hold on. Let me get a screenshot of both of these. It's it's toggling back and forth. You see how it's going back and forth, but we had it. So we have it on the, we had it on the daily, weekly, and monthly and quarterly. And I just had it on the four hour. And as I was about to take a screenshot, it went to red. But anyway, that, the day's not over. We're heading higher here the rest of today. I can see that on the vol index. I'm sorry, the trend strength indicator, TSI. So it's a bit of a bounce, uh, and this will turn green a little bit later. I uh, would bet on it. All right, uh, with that in mind, let me just jump over here. We looked at ETH, ETH all green on the radar. Things are looking good in the markets overall. So in terms of scenarios, what could we be in store for? Uh, let me open this up. Uh, but we had the ERI, we had the TSI, we had the signal and the bell. So this is looking bullish. We're in a number sequence, right? So with these, we are looking for these to continue all the way through to the bag of money as our take profit signal. And the, the key is that signal, a trend change may be forming, a trend may be forming. Red is there's no trend. Okay, it doesn't mean sell, it means there's no trend. This means the key says, hey, we may have a new uptrend forming. The bell confirms it. And so it does get us in a little bit late sometimes. That's why we love the ERI, the early reversal indicator here, the TSI here. Usually that's when we're entering and uh, adding. Look at that. Well, it's all green again, like I told you. And uh, so if we zoom out, we zoom out, went in doubt, zoom out with the Fibonacci projections here. Uh, I think we're in this nice upward trending channel and uh, we'll push up higher to this 44K, but really the golden pocket here are 48K to 50K. And for some reason, the, the golden pocket's not fully showing up here. I think I've got the wrong one showing. I'm having some memory issues on my computer though. It's not allowing me to, there. Okay, so if what we'd wanna do is add in the 0.65 to get the uh, golden pocket in there. Let me give that a different color so that's clear. Cool. Yeah, this, this little sliver between 0.618 and 0.65 that's known as a golden pocket. And generally on a big fib retracement like that wheel, you know, it often retraced to the 50% level. It did came come right up to the 382 level. See this? And then it's that's where we are now. We're sort of you know holding off on the 382 level, probably push to the 50% level, which is right around 41,600. And then from there, it's the 48K to 50K range. I think we pull back on that. That's a profit taking moment. And then we push up higher and uh, we start breaking higher. That's what I believe. But new information equals new decisions. So we'll see what happens. Uh, anyway, um, Let's see, we've covered news. I just always like to pull this up too. And uh, Bitcoin ordinals see resurgence from Binance listing. So that could be helping to some of the last hurrah here. But, you know, if we've come up a long way. I think it's just a little bit tired and needs a breather on uh, the Bitcoin. All right, you guys. Uh, well, let's see. Uh, we can go through some of these other charts here. And if there's anything you want to see, let us know. This, this will cover tomorrow. These are the monthly charts on Bitcoin in the M3 Active Trader class. It's where you have daily access to me. You find out more at moonstream.io slash M3 and covers uh, all of these things. A little bit of my background and I've been doing this for 20 years. Daily access to me, daily updates in the Signal Chat, live weekly classes where we go a little bit deeper into all of these things. Exclusive members area with cheat sheets and other tools, including an interactive portfolio tracker that I've created, a dollar cost averaging tracker, all of these tools here, high probability candlestick charts. Guys, if you're not using these, 
and you're in M3, make sure you have these handy. And also the, you know, the portfolio tracker, the uh, high probability trading patterns here in candlestick patterns, uh, very helpful, especially when you're learning all these things, it includes crypto mastery indicators. And, uh, and there you go, lots of feedback here. You can go read about that. If you just want access to the indicators and not all of the other live classes, that's at cryptomastery.org. Okay, so we've got something for everybody, everyone. And with that in mind, let's uh, let's get some more alpha here for you guys. Um, what else on a monthly chart? I do like this uh, chart setup here. Let's look at some movers, just to kind of wrap things up with this. And this is the uh, trading view crypto market um, gainers. So we've got ordinals. Okay. So let's uh, have a look at this. And things are running a little slow here today. I'll let that load. I'm looking at some of these with total market caps that um, are worth showing. So ordinals is steam dollars, I guess we could look at and then quiz talk. I'm not familiar with quiz talk. You know, every market cycle, there are new projects that emerge and come out of nowhere. Oh, uh, well, that's interesting. Why did it put it on a double-sided chart for me? I don't understand that. Let's try this again. See it on super charts, and usually it'll put it on a single chart. Huh. Okay, bear with me. Just need to change the layout on, the, uh, on this as soon as this loads up. But anyway, we can see the push higher in ordinals on the four hour, by the way, a nice uh, push higher order flow coming in. Uh, I'm not sure, well, probably some news that just came out, but let me change my uh, layout and uh, let's see, one week, don't want the weekly, hang on, I, I did the wrong one. Any questions, you guys? I got a bunch of charts here, load layouts. I want the daily chart main. This is the one I want. Okay, uh, no no questions. So probably wrap things up soon. Let's see. But uh, ALI, now why did ALI pop up? Let's try ordinals one more time. These things, sometimes they save when you're on a different chart, and it's kind of strange when that happens. Okay, ordinals weekly. Yeah, so Ordinal's making a resurgence. Um, interesting. Well, I would not chase this here. As we know, the upper Bollinger Band, the 3BB, that's likely uh, pushing above that. Let's just add that uh, back in real quick and do our modification. The way we modify Bollinger Bands is a secret. Uh, it's a secret for our students. Now, I've added it three times here. There's definitely something wonky going on with the interwebs here today. So uh, let me just make that fix. And if you were quick on the replay, you could see what I did there. But this this is not one to chase. This will this will pull back down. This is just people uh, chasing it. So it's above the upper B Bollinger Band. That's not, not one to chase. Okay, uh, let's jump out of here. And that's Ordinals. Let's see, Steam Dollars. Now, Steam It was by the founder of EOS. I met those guys, Dan Larimer, on a Bitcoin Mastermind in St. Martin in 2014. So this is an interesting looking chart here. Um, I don't know enough about the project, but this, it, it's again, I, what I'm looking for in these markets is just, just this crossing of the 21 week above the 50 week. You know, if there's any volume in the project, uh, this is a beautiful time to be getting into these things because look what happens. These things can really run. What I would say is I'm going to put an alert here right above that, see if it breaks Uh, this um, 5.03 level that that shows that it, it does want to push higher, but that would be one to uh, keep an eye on and um, and possibly it's at three dollars. I mean, these are I, we'd have to look it up here, but in the bull run, these things can easily double or triple. And uh, I don't know enough about it, so we'll leave that alone for now. I may put it on a watch list. So 
we'll keep an eye on that, you guys. We have this is how we found Ator, by the way, before it went up a hundred percent, was on that market leaders. So let's let's not ignore that. So we talked, looked at ordinals, we looked at steam dollars. Uh, let's say bunk. I don't know what that is. It looks very small, only 22 million volume. Market cap is decent, I guess. So we can we can take a look at bunk. And uh Moon River, I've heard of. And uh, it's good to put these on our radar. Now, this is an AI coin. So, pal, anything AI is uh, worth looking at. And I'm sorry, I didn't show you the total market cap, you guys. I totally zoned out on that. We do look at that usually on a, our uh, Wednesday class. So, let me jump over here and for the question that came in for Michael, uh, it's uh, certainly we can dive into it more tomorrow. But the question, I believe, was, you know, this 1.3 trillion level, you know, the thing, we are putting in, it, it's it's definitely creating a support level though. I mean, this is, if we draw a line right through there, it's above it. So typically what you would see is a brief pullback, find support on it, kind of meander, and then this without that funny little wave in there, right? Let me try that again. You know, so, so that's what I would suggest. You know, we typically these these resistance levels come back and retest. OK, um, so that's what I'd be watching for. Let's get back to where were we? So bunk on the super charts. I never heard of it, not endorsing it, not financial advice. So uh, it's a new project to me. Uh, I'm not going to pull it up, although look at that. I mean, this thing's uh, it's. I don't know. Now my curiosity is going. Bonk coin. <laughs> is the true community coin of Web3 boasting over 131? Uh, yeah. I mean, these are the kind of things that people just start buying it up. It's probably on margin. Let's see where they you can trade it. Probably available on the mark. Uh, uh, yeah. So this is, this is getting pumped and dumped. Radium. I've never heard of Radium as an exchange. Have you guys? But uh, look at the price on this thing. Yeah, dude, this this is danger, danger, danger. Will Robinson point zero 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 nine seven zero five, uh, aka shitcoin. Um, careful with these. Now it's in an uptrend. You know, you could throw some. A lot of people go and put a few hundred dollars in these things and just see what happens, and they write it off. Uh, it's getting pushed up higher, but as we can see in the. Uh, over to this thing it's not even available where would you buy it if you're us based you can't buy this gate io buy bit htx is the formerly hyobi what a terrible idea to come out with htx after ftx this is a terrible idea orca uh never heard of so we can't even buy this if we want to i don't see it on uh, uniswap or the dexes is it um so i th these are the ones it's not worth getting excited about so bonk uh is a no-go all right super charts so we've got six dollars and three cents on this moon river i have heard of this and come up a little bit over the hours so we'll keep going and keep it fast uh moon river here chart looks decent it's coming up what do our signals tell us let's put the eri we are getting an eri on this all right so and the ATR hasn't quite turned yet. The average true range hasn't gone bullish. We have the ERI TSI. And I don't see the signal is, is green, but uh, let's take a, a little closer look at this. I don't, don't know what they do. Since I've heard of them, I'll pull it up. Solidity smart contracts on... So it's a parachain on Kusama. Kusama is... What is that the development arm for um, Polkadot? So Kasama is like the, what's the right word for it? Things that aren't ready to go on chain with Polkadot. They, they put it on Kusama. Uh, I'm assuming that's the, the right one for 2021. It's either Kasana or Kusama. Uh, I could be getting it mixed up. But so Kraken, so it's available. What do they do? Uh, Moon River, ETH compatible smart contract pair chain of Kusama. Yeah, I remember the Kusama. Uh, it's intended to be a companion network to Moonbeam. Never heard of this. Permanently incentivized canary network. 
Uh, it's, it's, yeah, Polkadot, right? So once proven, the same code will ship to Moonbeam on Polkadot. Right, I knew. So it is Kasama is the uh, canary for Polkadot. So I'm not sure why they do that. I guess if it goes badly, it doesn't look bad for a Polkadot. Uh, okay, well, Moon River. I, guys, that's legit. And mostly owned by the community. So the foundation only owns 30%. The, uh, let's look at the um, fully diluted market cap. Uh, the, the market cap currently is $53 million. Fully diluted 70 million. So it's mostly been, you know, it's not like anyone's going to go dump a whole bunch of this. Uh, so uh, let's keep this on our radar. I'd say Moon River kind of pushing higher here. Looks good on our indicators and add it to a watch list. Sure. Why not? All right. So with that out of the way, uh, actually, you know, we can keep it on this watch list too. Moon River, Crypto Mastery. There we go. Okay. I'll put this away though. And what are some of these other ones here? We had uh, Vibrate. I don't know why what this was. We looked at this last week, and that was on that movers and shakers list. But I think Wayne Gretzky is going to sail skate somewhere else. All right, um, we can um, put him over on Compound, so that way keep an eye on Wayne. Uh, Moon River. We talked about that. We have this one, Pal AI. AI. Sorry, been a long day. Pal AI. And this is an AI coin. We are watching the AI sector. This thing's gone in a gone in a tear. Um, it may already be in our AI watch list. Yeah, it's not, but it is now. But I wouldn't be bothering uh, buying this and chasing it up at this top or to this Chen channel necessarily. I mean, what does this thing do though? Um, it's it has me intrigued. All right, let's have a look. Pal AI tools, cryptocurrency focus AI, coin market cap. Let's see if we can grab that too. It's just taking me to the website. Ooh, the voice to your web data. I think that's kind of a hideous looking creature there. It looks a little bit amateurish. I don't know. Call me crazy. Um, Let's see what's the deal here. Huge uh, market cap, circulating supply. Well, circulating supply is high. 78 for 78, not bad at the market cap. What do they do? Can you buy it? Uniswap has it. And let's just take a quick look at what uh, this is all about here. So, Pal News, AI Crypto Render. Well, we know about Render. What does that have to do with Pal? Advanced chatbot, all caps, another red flag. So that's a, kind of annoying. I don't know, Spidey Sense, tingling, uh, that's a no for me. Um, I'll keep, but we know about it, it's on a watch list. So, you know, we will keep it on the uh, radar to some extent. All right, anything else here, guys? I don't see much else happening here. I can skim down this list and I don't see anything I recognize except for SDAO. Uh, we did say we would look at SDAO a bit. Let's take a look at super charts and then we'll wrap things up. And um, But uh, certainly keeping an eye on all the things we talked about today and uh, watching for the proper entries, pullbacks uh, on the to the 20 or 50 day EMAs. I think that, you know, this is a likely pullback area, but I'd love to see, I'd love to see SDAO come back down below, set an alert crossing down back down below 49 cents because that to me is a buy pullback buy dip uh, because um s dow is one uh, on our ai list so anyway you guys uh but a bit overbought on this um the uh, we daily tsi if we go to a weekly you know still hitting some resistance there and out of everything else i'm not seeing anything that really jumps out at me let's go to our crypto mastery list and we talked about Unify, um, nothing's real. Well, what is this? I was just about to say nothing's moving and Mover is moving. Well, that's Moon River. I didn't see that it was up 21%. Okay, so we'll move that thing, uh, that bugger up a bit. Okay, well, I don't see any any other suggestions, you guys. Uh, if you liked the class, if you're watching on YouTube, please hit the like button. I'm trying to get this out to more people. And uh, you can always sign up for the live classes at moonstream.io. Here down at the bottom, 
Uh, we have a free newsletter. Also, make sure to sign up for that. That's uh, it goes out monthly. Sorry, Mondays every week. A trader success checklist, which I showed you. And did that thing ever load? There it is. So basically, with this, you check off the when the criteria are hit, and it gives you a score for when you would want to get into trades. So turn this off here because it's only going to work with the PDF version. And again, it's taking a while to load. Uh, lastly, too, uh, make sure to go ahead. Before they take this down, uh, the summit interviews were so good. We had 27 top experts, including Mark Yusko and uh, Max Wright and some other of our, our friends here. But uh, these are excellent. $97 plus the speaker bonuses. It's a steal. It's really just to cover the cost, the media cost to, for the team to put all that together. Okay, so here's that trader success checklist. So you can uh, check these off and get an actual real-time score on that trade. So you can get all that for free at moonstream.io by going over here as well as some other free reports. All right, well, thanks everybody. And um, you know, things are kind of percolating going sideways. Uh, that's all we have for today. And we'll dive into this more in more depth on the Moonstream M3 class tomorrow at noon Eastern. And uh, then please also join us for the Retire Rich Inner Circle classes on Thursdays. Mike is back, so that'll be a good class as well. We're going to talk about airdrops and uh, the DYDX airdrop a little bit. So anyway, you guys, thanks so much. I don't see any questions, so we'll see you next time. Take care.